Number 20. An Olympic class sprinter starts a race with an acceleration of 4.5 meters per second squared. Letter A. What is her speed 2.4 seconds later? Okay, so let's just sketch a quick picture. So we have a sprinter, and she starts a race, and her acceleration, right? Well, she's starting from rest, right? So we know that the initial velocity here would be zero. And it says that her acceleration is 4.50 meters per second squared. And it wants to know her speed 2.4 seconds later. So the time that elapsed from, let's say, the starting point to now the ending point, okay, is uh, t is equal to 2.40 seconds. So what we now need to do is we need to figure out at this particular point, what is her uh, speed or her velocity? Okay, I'm gonna, the question asks for speed. I know I'm using V here. In the problem, they're going to be the same, uh, but I will start using the variable S. Um, so actually, just so we don't confuse anyone, let's just substitute uh, S in here right now. And then again, back over here for initial. We'll just put speed. Okay. All right. So now uh, the formula, right? If we're thinking about speed, speed um, is equal to uh, change in displacement over change in time. And another formula that we may need uh, that we probably will use instead is going to be the acceleration formula uh, is usually the change in velocity over the change in time. But like I was saying before, since velocity and, sp velocity and speed in this problem are going to be the same. So I'm just going to change that to be change in speed over change in time. Um, so now, if we're uh, looking to find, we're trying to find the final speed, basically, right? So let's just expand the delta S. So the final speed minus the initial speed divided by the change in time. Okay, so the acceleration they gave to us was 4.50. Right, so 4.50 meters per second squared, and equals the final um, speed minus the initial, which was zero, divided by now the change in time, and for this problem it was 2.40 seconds. So from here I can now do my calculations. I have consistency within the time units, so that's good. Um, now, when I do find the speed value, it will be in meters per second, okay? So let's just now get rid of all those uh, units just to clean things up a little bit. So 4.50 will equal the final speed divided by 2.40. 2 so just do a cross multiplication here. Take out the calculator, 4.5 times 2.4. So it comes out to 10.8. And we have three significant figures. So that works out. This is meters per second. And that's the final speed there when the uh, sprinter uh, reaches a time of 2.40 seconds. Now for part B. So now it says to sketch a graph of her position versus time for this period. All right, so what we can do is we can come up with a few uh, general graphs. Okay, so I'll give you a couple here. So let's assume that we have a constant acceleration and that the acceleration is a positive value. Okay, so here we'll do acceleration as a positive number. The graph, I'll give you a few graphs. The graph of then the acceleration versus time, remember the acceleration will be constant, should be just a nice straight line. Okay, now if I were to then draw a graph of let's say the velocity uh, per time, okay, this is all for constant acceleration. So constant A, okay. Um, this graph will be linear and will be increasing uh, with a positive slope. And now, last but not least, we can now draw the position graph. And the position graph would be essentially the distance versus time, right? Or displacement versus time here. Um, what we're going to see here is we're going to see almost like an exponential type of graph now. Okay? Um, so... These are the three graphs you must be familiar with when you're considering a constant positive acceleration, okay? If it were a constant now, 
actually, I'm just going to write, if it were a negative acceleration, okay, that would be a deceleration, we would have these three graphs now. Just draw a little line. We would have these three. So now the um, acceleration value, right, if I were to think about where this would be, this would be the time, this would be the acceleration, and now the graph would just be there at the bottom, right, of my, of my axes, okay? Um, the velocity now would, it would depend on, you know, what the starting initial velocity would be, but um, it's going to be a negative slope, okay, that's for sure. So it's going to have that appearance to it. And then if I were to think about now my position versus time graph, it should have a form of something like this now. Okay, last but not least now, so we talked about positive acceleration, negative acceleration, and now let's say when acceleration is zero, what do the graphs look like? Well, right, the uh, acceleration versus time graph would now be um, where the acceleration is just zero the whole time, right? So it's down there on the x-axis. The then velocity graph will look like this now. We have velocity here. The velocity is now constant, so now it'll be horizontal. Whether it'll be a positive velocity or a negative velocity, I don't know. But I do know that it will be horizontal, and that's most important. Okay. And then, um, last but not least, if I were to now draw the, let me make it a little bigger. Oops. Um, if I were to now draw the position versus time graph, uh, this graph will now look like a linear increasing function. And again, if it's, it'll be increasing if the velocity is uh, positive, or if the velocity were, let's say, a negative value, I'll put that in uh, black here, the velocity were a constant negative number, then we would see the graph of the position versus time just have a negative slope. So those are all the possible cases of graphs that you can see. So if it asks us just to sketch, you know, a graph here, what we, we really want to think about which one of these looks like nine models, right? Or if you count the black ones as separate, um, then that would be 11 models, right? The, the black uh, lines here with the negative velocity and therefore the negative slope on the uh, position graph. Um, we just have to pick out which one it is, right? So notice the acceleration. Let's go back to the problem. The acceleration is positive, right? So if we've got to sketch a position versus time graph, it would look something like this. Okay, so I'm going to draw that over here on the right. So uh, time, distance, we know that she's starting from rest, so therefore her position we could assume to be zero, and it would just be a sketch like this. It would be some... Uh, it would it would have a constantly changing slope there, and that would be the general sketch. <clears throat> you know, maybe we have to also find some time values, but um, we'll do that in another problem. All right. So thanks, guys, for tuning in. I uh, hope this helped. And uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe, and uh, we would appreciate it. Thank you very much.